We're going to crowd around this pair right here actually to start. It doesn't really matter. You just kind of come up around the I want you to be able to see the bowling balls that are on the racks. That's what's important right now. Come on, we can all get close. We all showered this morning. Hopefully. Oh, <laughs> you can't get close. I just want you to be able to look at a bowling ball right now. It doesn't necessarily be this one. It can be that one. It can be the other one. But I want you to look at the bowling ball right. Okay? So, one of the things that you're going to notice immediately about these bowling balls, minus this one, because we just got done actually surfacing that one, <laughs> is that if you look at the surface of the bowling balls, they're all kind of shiny, right? Hmm? We can agree on that, right? It doesn't matter on this right either. It's the same thing. They're all pretty shiny. All the balls are pretty shiny. Now, what's interesting is, is if we went back and looked up the cover stock finish on these bowling balls, they probably aren't all shiny, right? We would agree on that. Some are dull. Some are supposed to be shiny. That ball was dull for, for sure to start with. But they all kind of look shiny. And when you look at them, they all kind of look about the same amount of shininess, right? So what that means is something is changing the surface of your bowling ball as you're using it. And it's changing all the bowling balls, irregardless of what bowling ball, what manufacturer, what color, what, whether it's solid, whether it's pearl, whether it's hybrid, none of that matters. They all look about the same. So if I told you that when you bought the bowling ball, the bowling ball was dull, and then now you look at the bowling ball and the bowling ball is shiny, we'd also all agree that there probably is a reaction difference, right? If the ball started out sanded and the ball now is shiny, the ball's probably going to go longer and look a little bit less. If the ball was really shiny, right, to start with, and now it's a little bit duller, the ball's probably going to look a little bit earlier, right? Now, how many people have had a bowling ball, they got a brand new bowling ball, they got it drilled up, they go, up, they go bowl the first night of the league, they bowl with it, and they bowl really well, right? They like the bowling ball. This is a great bowling ball, right? You experienced that before? Yep. Then you come back the next week, and you bowl again, and you're like, man, you know, it's not wrong like you did last week. And Mike, did you do something to the lanes? You put more oil on the lanes this week? What's oh, yeah. going on? You know? <laughs> that always happens, right? Exactly. It's always the lane, the lane mechanics fault, right? So one of the things that people don't realize is a lot of the times that you have that change in reaction is because your surface has changed and you didn't even know it, right? So then, you know, you bowl three or four weeks or whatever and you kind of, you know, figuring it out still. And you're like, okay, well, let me go back to the pro shop and have them put the service back on the bowling ball again, right? So he puts the service on the bowling ball, you bring it back and you're like, oh, well, that, that's rolling different. It's definitely different than what it was last time before I gave it to him, but it's not like it was when it was brand new, right? Well, there's a reason for that too. The reason for that is because when the manufacturer puts the surface on the bowling ball, they have high-powered equipment, right? They have uh, uh, very industrial type equipment, um, high pressure, high speed to get those bowling balls through that process. Well, us, I'm, I own a pro shop, we don't, we don't have that kind of equipment. So it's virtually impossible for the pro shop to replicate what the factory did. And that's one of the big reasons that you can't get the factory finish back on a bowling ball. And we got tons of videos, and I'll give you the, the YouTube link where you can go watch and you can see all this stuff yourself when we're done. But the concept is surface plays a very, very important role in your ball reaction. That's maintaining your ball reaction, that's changing your ball reaction. It's one of the most important things that you can that you need to understand. And in two weeks, we're not going to be able to clean your bowling ball during competition, right? We're all going to go to a dry towel, which means you can only clean it before or after, right? So that's important. And then not only that, but you also have to realize that having the right surface on your bowling ball is the key between having a great reaction and having an okay reaction and having a bad reaction. There are times, I'm sure you've experienced this yourself, where you've been throwing the ball really good. You're hitting the pocket consistently, but you're just not carrying it at all, no matter what you do. You make a little move, and it's still not enough. You make another move, not so much. And that's really a function of you having the wrong surface on your bowling ball. Now, it can be some physical issues too, right? If you're not throwing it good, then that's not gonna help, right? You gotta be throwing it good first, right? But if you are throwing it good and you're in the right part of the lane, because that matters too, if you're in the wrong part of the lane, that's a problem too. If you're in the right part of the lane, you're still not carrying, then it probably is your ball reaction. Your ball reaction is a function primarily of the surface. So one of the things that I wanna talk to you about and help you, help educate you on today specifically is the importance of surface and the role that it plays. I used to go out on tour and help the guys on tour get their bowling balls right for TV. So essentially what would happen is 
the tour reps would go out there and they'd be with the guys most of the week. I would come out toward the end of the week and then I would help the tour guys get their arsenals ready for TV because the, when the TV comes, the pattern's different. It, it may be laid down the same, but it's not gonna play the same, right? The traffic's gonna be different, the amount of games are gonna be different, the lights are on it, it's just a completely different pattern. So it was my job to come out there and help get the players' arsenals ready, including the surface, so that they would have options to be able to go to. And like Mike had mentioned earlier, when he was bowling, right, he was bowling with his bowling ball and he was getting a good reaction, he's bowling good, he's making the cut, he's, he's firmly in the number, comes back the next day and all of a sudden it's starting to go away, starting to fade. And he's thinking, well, maybe it's something that, that, that I'm, I'm he knows he's throwing it good, so it's, that, that's not the issue. But he's thinking, well, man, maybe the lane pattern is really different today. Maybe what is going on here? And part of the issue can fall back to surface because one of the first questions I asked him was, I said, hey, did you surface your bowling ball back? And he was like, you know, I didn't actually. And because the surface of the bowling ball is so important, especially with today's performance reactive balls, if you don't keep and maintain your surface, your reaction is guaranteed to change. It's guaranteed. And I wanted everybody to come here because I wanted you to look. It doesn't matter what rack we go on, all the balls are gonna look this shiny, about this shiny. And we actually, uh, we have a, a ball surface scanner. And what it is, is it's a machine that will actually tell you what the surface is of the bowling ball. So we've been traveling all over the country <laughs> And we're like, you know what, well, why don't we find out, because we, we noticed this, we said, well, what do we find out what these surfaces kind of end up at with the surface scanner? So it didn't matter where we went, it didn't matter if it was wood or if it was synthetic or if it was an old house, we did it at the brand new uh, bowling lanes in, in Las Vegas, the plaza, the bowling plaza. It didn't matter where we went, we checked these bowling balls. They all averaged out right around 4,700 grit. So it didn't matter whether the ball started out at 500 grit from the factory, or 6,000 grit from polish. They all ended up at about 4,700 grit. And on average, a bowling ball, typically they start out at about 2,000. Typically, that's the typically typical sanded number for a bowling ball. So imagine if your balls started out at 2,000 and it more than doubles the number of grit. And the higher the number, the more shinier the ball is. The lower the number, the more sanded the ball is. That makes sense? So it is, this, is, this, was, this was very, very important especially on tour, and it transcends all the way down to the average league bowler. Because if you understand surface and surface manipulation, you can actually set yourself up with your current, with your current arsenal to be able to allow you to make transitions that make sense more consistently, more predictably. And what tends to happen is most people don't, they neglect the surface. They say, hey, I got a ball cleaner, right? We all got ball cleaners. So I'm going to clean my ball with the ball cleaner. The ball cleaner does a good job of cleaning the ball, but it doesn't impact or change typically the surface. And that's why all the balls are shiny still. 